I'd like to take a few minutes and let's talk about first aid kits. Now, me personally, I keep a first aid kit in the car. Um, I have one in my backpack. I have one in the house. And this one is for out here at the cabin. And what I'd like to do is go over what I put in my first aid kits. And first aid kits can be a lot of things. However, out at the cabin for the longest time, all I had as a first aid kit was a bandana, a roll of duct tape, and a package of BC powder. Because, honestly, that was all I needed. However, as time goes on, um, I decided to actually build a proper first aid kit for the cabin. So let me adjust that camera angle down so you can get a better look. First aid kits don't have to be expensive. They also, in my opinion, should not be something you just buy off the shelf as a standard first aid kit that they sell at most places. I build my own. It comes out to about 27 bucks for a, a one like this. And it has everything I'm gonna need. Now, this box that I have it in is a pencil box from the dollar store. So that bit was a buck. I have Band-Aids. Um, it's, I bought a pack of various size band-aids, and then I bought a pack specifically of butterflies. Those can come in handy, and those are here on the back of the package. I take them out of the box and I put them in a Ziploc bag so that I know where they are. Medical tape is handy to have, so got a roll of medical tape in here. We have some alcohol pads. I bought a bunch of these years ago and just throw four or five in as an antiseptic. Now, in lieu of alcohol pads, what I normally do is pick up one of these little travel bottles of Purell. This is basically alcohol in a gelatin mix. Um, you can use this on cuts. Plus, you can sterilize your hands with it. And we're gonna get into pills that I have put in here. So, first and foremost is acetaminophen. This is Tylenol. Acetaminophen is useful as a painkiller. These are standard. I have a little baggie of extra strength in here. They work good on migraines. They also work good as a general painkiller. I have a small bottle of ibuprofen. Ibuprofen works as a anti-inflammatory. And you can take ibuprofen and Tylenol at the same time. So, if, for example, you've broken a finger, you can take a couple of Tylenol and three or four ibuprofen and dull the pain and make sure that you keep the swelling under control until you can get into a hospital. If you're going to a hospital over a broken finger, I don't. Um, I use medical tape and something stiff. Uh, I've broken enough bones. So, just make note of the dosage on the bottle. This is a 200 milligram per pill, and the acetaminophen is 325 milligram per pill. The reason you want to make note of those is if you do go to the hospital, they're going to ask you what you took, and it's good that you can tell them, I took two 325 milligrams of acetaminophen, and I took three 200 milligram ibuprofen. That way they know what's in your system. This is aspirin. This is regular everyday aspirin. Now, 325 milligrams of aspirin. The reason I put this in here, aspirin's actually good if you're having a heart attack. They tell you to take a pill and chew it up because aspirin is a blood thinner. So I put some aspirin in here. Yeah, it can work on headaches. It can work on a variety of things. But that's really in case of a heart attack type thing. All right, so these little pink pills in the package, and I got two of them, are Benadryl. Benadryl is an antihistamine. It's a very good antihistamine. In the event you're having a severe allergic reaction, you can pop a couple of these. You may want to chew them up before you swallow them, which will slow it down long enough to get to a hospital on a severe one. Um, otherwise, they can also be used as a general antihistamine or a sleep aid. 
because uh, Benadryl does cause drowsiness. It does help you sleep. And then in the bottom of the box, I have four non-stick three inch by four inch gauze pads. Those go with the tape. That way, if anything happens, I'm pretty much covered. I like to think I'm covered, it may not be. So we can put all this back into the box. And you'll note that all of this really does fit neatly into this pencil box without too much fuss. So that's my emergency kit. Now, I always have a pocket knife on me. And for things like splinters, there are better solutions than tweezers. If you get a wood splinter in your finger, stick your finger in water until your finger starts to go wrinkly. What will happen is the wood will swell and in most instances it will push itself out of your finger without a need for a pair of tweezers. Well, that's about it. Um, total invested is $27 in this little kit. And I can leave it out here at the cabin. It doesn't hurt anything. And that way I have it if I need it. So you should always have a good first aid kit at your house, or in, in this case in my tiny cabin. You should probably carry one in your car, and the one I carry in my car is slightly different in that I've just got a few pills in a baggie as emergencies, and then um, I have a couple of military bandages that are for more severe wounds. So I'm going to go ahead and put this up into the cabinet, and this is going to stay out here from now on just in case. I would suggest that uh, if you have the opportunity, you really should build a good first aid kit. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. And if you're not a subscriber, why don't you pick one of these videos over here, take a look at them. If you like what you see, click that subscribe button down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you would, leave me a comment, tell me what you thought.